Welcome YouTubers, this is your boy Gu and I'm back with another video and today I will talk about the light tanks. I will cover the topics on their role, the equipment they use and how they work, their advantages and disadvantages, and finally how to set up your light tank to suit your style of play. First off, uh, if you take a look in your garage, you will notice that uh, all the tier 1 tanks are light tanks, except for the British Tech 3, which is a medium tank. Apart from that, every Tech 3 begins with a light tank. So now let's go ahead and define the role of the light tank. Compared to the medium tanks and heavy tanks, what is the difference? Well, light tanks are light because they have no armor or very little armor. That means you get killed very quickly if you are on a head-to-head -head fight. So the first rule of thumb is avoid confrontation. Light tanks can be a challenge to newer players because they tend not to survive very long in a game. With hardly any armor, you can take only a few hits from enemy guns before you are killed in action. Light tanks also get plus one matchmaking which means if you're in a tier 6 light tank, you will be matched as a tier 7, and that means you'll run into tier 9 tanks. So in order to be successful in a light tank, you do need the knowledge and experience to be able to be uh, successful and be a valuable contributor to your team. So why pick light tanks? Well, they do have excellent camo rating and view range compared to medium tanks and heavy tanks. Good camo rating helps you stay undetected longer against medium tanks and heavy tanks, while their superior view range helps you see the enemy before they see you. Light tanks also typically come with a smaller gun that does less damage per shot, but they do have a faster reload. As it, for example, this 1357 does 90 damage per shot, but with a 1 second reload. Light tanks also have increased mobility compared to any other tank, and uh, they often brawl in the end game, or use its uh, mobility to outmaneuver the enemy in uh, critical situations. Like this. Here you can see the light tanks swarming the enemy and creating confusion, while the allies in the heavy tanks roll in to finish the job. When all was said and done, it was 3v1, and uh, while the heavy tanks keep the enemy occupied from the front, the light tank will flank around the back and uh, take advantage of the weak armor on the back of the IS-3. Alright, let's recap the light tank objectives. Number one, provide intel for the team. And you do that by active spotting or passive spotting. So here's an example of uh, active spotting, going up the ridge and coming back down. Provide the spots for the team, spot the enemy along the ridges and duck back down to safety. In the active spotting mode, you are relying on your speed and mobility to keep you safe from being killed. Even when I take shots at the enemy, I do not stop and aim. 
I keep moving and shooting. This is so that uh, I can avoid being slapped down. I won't be an easy target for the enemy. In contrast, passive spotting means sitting in the bush ahead of the team, spotting the enemy in the front while hoping for your backup tank destroyers and heavy tanks to focus fire and destroy the enemy tanks ahead. A passive scout sits in the bush and does not fire his gun. Instead, he marks the target with the T key and uh, he calls upon the team to fire upon that target. Remember, hold your fire if you want to remain undetected. So remember, objective number one, provide intel for your team. Whether you are active spotting or just passive spotting, you are invaluable. And number two, support and back up your team. You can be a pest, a nuisance, a troublemaker, sit at the back and snipe when they're not looking at you. Always look for the opportunity to sneak in a few shots support your team, chip away at the enemy, and you will make a difference. In this situation, I am a tier 6 up against tier 8 tanks, therefore I am the least dangerous tank in the game. So while the enemy is not paying any attention to me, I am sneaking in a couple of shots here and there, contributing to the success of my team. So now let's go straight to crew training. Typically you receive a 50% crew in your new tanks and uh, you have to train them up to a 100% before you can pick your first crew or perk. You can use gold or credits, 20,000 20, credits for 75% training or 100 gold for 100% uh, training and you can pick your first skill after that. Roughly every six weeks, there is a 50% discount on that, so keep your eye on it if you want to save costs. Once your crew is trained up to 100%, you can begin to pick your skills, and you should always pick out six cents for your commander, and for the rest of your crew, camouflage. Next, paint your tank with camouflage. You can do this with uh, gold which is permanent or with credits that you can uh, pay for for weekly or monthly basis. I'm going to go ahead with a permanent gold and a weekly a weekly 5,000 credits for a non-permanent camouflage. So that's 50 gold and 5,000 credits. Again, keep an eye out for the 50% discounts every six weeks or so. Next are your minimum essentials of equipment for your light tank and uh, there are the camouflage net, the binocular telescope and the toolbox. They are expensive, you need a lot of credits for them. Uh, I have them around and I shall demount them from my other tanks and uh, put them into this tank. The reason why I um, left them on other tanks is to show you the price of uh, those equipment. Now if I bring it up, they are in my depot, they don't show a price, they only show a yellow tick which says I have it in my, uh, um, in my depot, so I just install it immediately. I can remove these three equipment, the toolbox, binoculars and um, camouflage net without paying any kind of penalty. You can move them around from tank to tank. So it's good to have a set of these minimum. Example, this permanent equipment, a vent, a vent. If I want to remove it, I need to pay 10 gold. So this is a more permanent equipment. And uh, these are more temporary equipments which you can move around from tank to tank. Once again, every six weeks or so, you can buy them at 50% discount. So keep an eye on them. So, as your skill level increases and you collect more higher tier tanks, you will opt for more permanent equipment. And to do this exercise successfully, you need more credits. You need a lot of credits. And the only way for that to happen 
is with a premium account and some premium tanks. You can do it with a regular account, but it is very slow and sometimes kind of painful process. However, if you are an above average player, you will earn the credits and experience much quicker. The premium account and premium tanks help you speed up the process by at least 50% and it is definitely worth the investment if you want to progress in a hurry. A competitive uh, light tank setup uh, looks like this. They often go for three of these five equipments. Optics, vertical stabilizers, uh, vents, gun lane drive, and rammers. Of course, you can only use three because you have only three slots. 90% of players will use a combination of these five products. In my aggressive scout, I like to run a rammer, a vertical stabilizers, and optics. However, uh, even more aggressive tanks like to swap out the optics for vents. On French light tanks, which are auto loaders like the 1390 AMX, they can't take ver vertical stabilizers and rammers, so I go with the gun lane drive, vents, and optics. So here's a tip. Make credits and save it for the sale periods. Stock up on equipment with the 50% sale. Anticipate what you need so you can buy them during the sale and keep them in your depot. If you have unused uh, equipment, sell them before or after the sale. Because during the sale periods, anything you sell loses its value by 50% as well. Binox and optics are the most important equipment to have on your light tank and I have it on almost every light tank that I own. Binoculars give you a 25% increased view range over your standard view range. However, they only work when you are stationary. As with camouflage net, they only work 5 seconds after you have stopped moving the hull of your tank. So here's a demonstration on how it works. As you can see in my minimap, my maximum view range is indicated by that blue circle. As I am traveling, the binoculars and camo net is not turned on. As soon as I pull up to a stop in this bush and give it a few seconds, you will see the binoculars turn on and the camo net turns on. So during this period, my camouflage and my view range is heightened and increased. As soon as I begin to move and uh, try to fight this guy here, I will immediately lose my view range and my camo rating. Coded optics gives you a 10% increased view range as opposed to the 25% of the binoculars, but uh, with coated optics, it is switched on constantly. So if you're the kind of player that likes to move around, relocate, and enjoy active play, then this is the best option for you. And if you have the brothers in arms perk on your crew, you will see that the view range increases even further, and it's almost like having permanent binoculars on. With that, let's uh, recap the essentials for your light tanks. If you are a beginner, I would suggest you go for the binoculars, camouflage net, and a toolbox. And as you move on to higher tier tanks, uh, tier 6 and above, you need to get the essentials like coated optics, vertical stabilizers, vents, gun lane drives, and gun rammers. These you can buy on discounts uh, every six weeks or so. There is a sale. Get them then at 50% discount. With that, I will conclude this video and wish you all the best of luck and see you on the battlefield. Bye!